In this video, we're going to address what is solubility. And then we'll focus on solubility and concentration by looking at the three types of solution. And then just to make sure that we're clear about what's a solution, we're going to start off with the basics addressing what is solute, solvent, and solution. And if you stay until the very end of this video, I'm going to share with you a very easy way to classify the three types of solution experimentally. Let's start off with a beaker of water. And then we add in a solid. In this example, the water is the solvent. And then the solid is the solute. Solvent is present in larger quantity and it's responsible to dissolve the solute. Solute, on the other hand, is the smaller quantity and is dissolved by the solvent. Now, when we mix these two together, in time, the solute is going to slowly dissolve and then it will form a solution. So basically, a solution is a mixture of solute plus solvent. It's a homogeneous mixture. I just want to point out that solute, solvent, and solution can be solid, liquid, or gas. And in this example, I just happen to choose a solid for our solute, liquid for our solvent, which in turn form a liquid solution. But any of those mixture between solid, liquid, or gas can form a solution. As long as the end result is a homogeneous mixture, that's a solution. Now we move on to answer what is solubility. Basically, it's the ability of a solute to dissolve in a solvent to form a solution. The solubility depends on the type of solvent that we're using, as well as the temperature and the pressure. Let's compare two types of solute, cobalt chloride, COCl2, and potassium permanganate, KMnO4. We add the solute to the water. We keep stirring until there's no more solid that can dissolve. And it looks like all of our COCl2 solid dissolve and we're left with quite a lot of KMnO4. This means that COCl2 has higher solubility since it can dissolve more solid when compared to KMnO4. So that makes KMnO4 having lower solubility. Now, if we were to get technical, at 20 degrees Celsius in 100 ml of water, we can dissolve 52.9 grams of COCl2. Whereas at the same condition for KMnO4, we can only dissolve 6.34 grams. And that makes sense because for the same amount of water, which is 100 ml, at the same temperature, 20 degrees Celsius, we can dissolve 52.9 grams of COCl2 as compared to only 6.34 grams of KMnO4, which is why we have quite a lot of KMnO4 solid undissolved. Now notice that the solubility is presented in grams of solute over 100 ml of water because water is our solvent in this case. Grams of solute over 100 ml of solvent is not the only unit. Here are some other units that are commonly used. Grams of solute over 100 ml of solvent, which is what we're using. Grams of solute over 100 grams of solvent. Grams per liter. Mole of solute over liter of solution, which is essentially the molarity. And there are other units as well, like PPM, so on and so forth. So that's basically what solubility is. Now that we know what solubility is, we're going to look at its connection to concentration. So let's just say we start out with a beaker and we dissolve some solute inside there. That solution that we have is called an unsaturated solution because I can add more solute and it would still dissolve into the solution. So that's an unsaturated solution. Now, if I continue on with that same beaker, but then I add more solute, and if I add a little bit more solute and it doesn't dissolve anymore, what I've produced is a saturated solution. Now, if I continue on from the saturated solution and I add even more solute, it will not dissolve at the same temperature because it has already reached its saturation. So I cannot dissolve any more solute into the solution at the same temperature, which in our case right now is 20 degrees Celsius. However, if I were to increase the temperature, the solubility will increase as well. So let's say I ramp it up to 40 degrees Celsius and then the solute will dissolve. And the solution that is produced is called a super saturated solution, which means we now have more solute dissolved in the solution 
when compared to the saturated solution. Now in time, the temperature is going to cool down. And when the temperature has cooled down, what we have now is a rather unstable solution because we have more solute than the solution can actually handle. So if we were to look at our cobalt chloride example, recall that at 20 degrees Celsius in 100 ml of water, we can dissolve 52.9 grams of COCl2. So for an unsaturated solution, basically it contains less than 52.9 grams of cobalt chloride. And for a saturated solution, it contains 52.9 grams of cobalt chloride. And for a supersaturated solution, we definitely have more than 52.9 grams because we had to ramp up the temperature to get all those extra solute to dissolve inside the solution. And then when the temperature cools, we have more solute inside the solution. And because we have more solute inside the solution, that solution is rather unstable. So if we were to add like a speck of tiny crystal or just touch it with our dirty fingers, crystals are going to form. So that's basically the three types of solution. We have unsaturated, saturated, and supersaturated. As promised at the beginning of the video, we're going to figure out how we can classify the type of solution very quickly, experimentally. So basically what we can do is just add a little bit of solute to the solution. If the solute dissolves into the solution, then what we have is an unsaturated solution. Now, if the solute doesn't dissolve into the solution, that means the solution that we have is already saturated. And if the solute causes crystal to form, what we have is a supersaturated solution. Hope that helps. If you're interested to try out some practice problem on this topic, definitely check out the next video that's coming out in this series. I'm going to place the link in the description box below. Here are the two videos that I've handpicked for you. Thanks for watching all the way till the end. If you find this video helpful, be sure to like and share it with someone. Don't forget to subscribe. Your support means a lot to me.